Everyone, we are here in the planetarium looking at a twilight here as the sun's about to go down, and what do you see? I see some dots in the sky. Mm, dots? Those probably are planets. They are. Where? It's right there. Can't you see it? I see a big dot. It's right there. It's probably the sun. Well, the other ones are right there. They're right there. Well, that, you're not being very helpful. You're not being very useful here. You're, you're just saying, look there. Well, how can I fix that? I don't know. Is there some kind of way to, to make that happen differently? Well, in the planetarium, a lot of you tell us, it's over there. What's that? I get that a lot. And we need a better way of doing this. So let's let the sun get close to setting here. And definitely you can see that there's a planet there. The planet is above the horizon. How high above the horizon? Well, there are some different ways to do this. And one way to do this is just by using the the parts of the hand. You can turn your hand into a fist or use three fingers and that will give you different degrees above the above the ground. So we can say like you said three fingers is five degrees, the fist is ten degrees, and putting your hand out like this is about fifteen degrees. We love astronomy. astronomy. So when you do this make sure your hand is way out in front of you and that's a good estimate of these measurements. Do not put it right in your face. It looks huge that way. We'll use this to estimate our distances in the planetarium. So hold my fist out here and using the horizon as my zero line, it looks like Venus is about 10 degrees up above the horizon. What would be straight up overhead? Mm, well, that would be 90 degrees. Or about nine fists. So yeah, I go give or take. Zero degrees at the horizon and 90 degrees straight up overhead. They call that the zenith. There's our zenith. So now, as we let the sky roll, we know that the sun always goes down in which location? Always in the west. So when it goes down in the west, that means that things rise in the east. So, okay, I could say that at sunset tonight, you could see Venus 10 degrees above the horizon if you look west. But what about all the rest of the stars out here that we're looking at? So if we look at the famous constellation of Orion, and I wanted to tell you where to look for Orion, what would you tell me? Well, I could tell you how far above the horizon it was, but how far around the horizon would I have to turn to get there? So that we'd have to know our cardinal directions, again, our north, south, east, and west. Sure. And I guess we could do the fist method around the entire sky. How many fists would we have if we do it that way? 36. Or 360 degrees. Right. So we have a 360 degree system that goes all around us. We just need a zero point. And the easiest zero point that people picked was due north. If due north is zero degrees, then south is about 180. So you could tell me, hey, look, 180 degrees or south, and we need a name for this. We have altitude for how much we rise in the planetarium. What about the left and right motion? Yeah, it doesn't make as much sense. I don't know where the word comes from, but they call it azimuth. So we gotta look for our azimuth, and you could say, look at your azimuth around 180 degrees, and you'd see the constellation of Orion. For altitude-wise, Orion's belt looks like it's sitting around 45 degrees of altitude, and we've got Betelgeuse up around 55 degrees, and we've got Rigel down at 40 degrees. The size of Orion the constellation is about 15 degrees from Betelgeuse to Rigel. Right, and if I was going to assign a, a value to this, I would say that Rigel is about 40 degrees altitude and around 180 degrees azimuth. All right, so let's track one of the stars in Orion here. And if we go, I guess we'll go with Rigel, since you just gave me the coordinates. At 10 o'clock, you said it was 40 degrees altitude and about one... 85 azimuth? Give or take. All right, and you said, hey, go out there and use those coordinates. Look at it right now, but maybe I'm lazy, and I don't come out until about midnight. So here we are at midnight, and I'm looking at 40 degrees altitude and 185 azimuth. You're and getting basically nothing there. I don't see anything. Why is that? Well, that's because this particular coordinate system is fixed to the Earth and your position on the Earth. So as the Earth rotates, stars appear to rotate and change position with respect to this coordinate system. Because this coordinate system is like very self-centered, very Earth-centric. 
everything looks like it revolves around you and we're seeing the stars move through our grid. So it's fixed to you, so it's great for your backyard use. And right now, two hours later, Rigel is sitting at about 33 degrees of altitude and about 220 degrees azimuth, yes. heading towards west. Another star we can do this for is our pole star. And to find the pole star, we've got the Big Dipper over here. And I can use Doobie and the other pointer star to take me straight to Polaris. And if I click on Polaris, I can see its altitude's about 42 degrees. What about its azimuth? Oh, it's zero. It's pretty much right on zero, mm -hmm. which means that is due north. So if you can find Polaris, and we said before, if I let this night sky spin, everything pivots right on Polaris. It maintains its altitude and its azimuth. It's really the only star that does it. Mm -hmm. For right now astronomy, backyard astronomy, you can tell someone how high it is above the horizon through its altitude and how far from north by using its azimuth. So this grid system's okay, and this grid system's nice, but we said it's only really good for your location. If I went to Australia, I'd have a completely different set of stars, and my grid system would still be zero at the horizon, 90 straight over my head. Which would not work very well for anybody else but you. We need a better system. We need a system that's kind of like how we find our location on our home planet here. So we, sitting here in Penn Trafford, are about 40 degrees north latitude and about 80-ish degrees west. Wow, and that's fixed to the Earth, right? That is fixed to the Earth. So if I turn the Earth, that will never change. It'd be awesome if we could have that in the sky. That would be, because I can find any location on Earth, I can find its latitude and longitude and get the exact location of it. So if we could project this latitude longitude system into the sky, we could actually track stars the same way. So we do have another grid system that we did project out there into the night sky, like latitude and longitude. And if you look at this system, we are now measuring degrees just like we did before. So you can use your hand and estimate degrees, but our zero is no longer the horizon. Right, it's a matching point in space that would be like our equator, um, which is your zero point, and you would go positive uh, to the n north of it and negative to the south of it. These angles, instead of them being called altitude now, are called declination, so it can tell you how high up above or below the celestial equator. But what about our longitude or our azimuth? Our azimuth was in degrees before. What are we measuring those in now? I'm seeing uh, what looks like a, a clock, a uh, time. So I'm seeing hours and minutes. So as we go around the sphere, instead of going 360 degrees of azimuth, we go how many hours? Well, 24 hours in a day, so 24 hour time periods. So we're translating that into what we call right ascension. Right ascension is the hours measured around the celestial sphere versus the angle up and down. So let's go back to Rigel again. If I click on Rigel, where would you estimate Rigel is? Well, according to this grid, it looks like it's about minus eight degrees declination. Okay, and if I had to give a right ascension to it, it'd be about five hours, about 15 minutes. Let's watch this at seven o'clock. If I let the sky roll, let's track Rigel. And if I track Rigel again, through the night sky, here we are at about 10 o'clock. What's the location of Rigel? Well, it hasn't changed. So it's still negative eight degrees of declination and five hours, 15 minutes of right ascension. right ascension, which is really, really nice. That is nice when you're trying to tell somebody in a different observatory uh, somewhere else on the globe where they can look for an object in the sky. So now that we're facing north, this is a tilted grid system compared to what we did before with altitude and azimuth. This system is pivoting on what? The North Pole. So if I look and click on the North Star again, we, the North Star has a declination of positive 90. That's mm -hmm. where the North Star is located. The right ascension, though, is pretty much all hours. Mm -hmm. What would that tell you? That tells you that it's right in the center of everything. And you could see it when? All the time. All the time. It's not something that rises and sets. It's something that stays up in the northern hemisphere all the time, which is why it's one of our circumpolar 
constellations and stars. So there's your right ascension declination. The pivot point is not zenith anymore, it is now on our pole star, and the stars stay in that exact location no matter what time of the day or what time of the year. So we can see like the celestial equator and the regular equator on Earth match up just like the north and south pole match up with the celestial north and south pole. It's really just us pushing our grid system out there in space to track objects and make sure we know where they're at because in our lifetime relatively the stars don't move. Relative. So now we have two useful uh, coordinate systems that depending on your situation might be better. It's just a matter of what your use is on which of these two things to choose. Do you want right now astronomy like altitude and azimuth gives you or do you want any time astronomy and to figure out where like we did Roger was at any moment of time of any year. So we're going to use those coordinate systems now to find objects in space and when you see us in the planetarium give us some direction. Yeah that would be really helpful. <laughs> Till next time.